hi, and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges, and we are coming to you from Cancun, Mexico today. And so I just, I really wanted to just take a little bit of time to honor you for listening, babe. Like, you are it. You got this. You know, sales is a hard industry to navigate, especially for us ladies, which is why this podcast is specially made just for you. So please make sure that you go ahead and if you're not already subscribed, babe, what the hell are you doing? Go ahead and subscribe right now and make sure you're sending this to your friends or people that you care about, anybody that you'd feel like this would really resonate. You know, that's how you can contribute here. You know, please put your questions, your comments below. I individually read every single one of them and happy to help or support you any way that I can. And today, what I want to speak to you about is a sales myth, okay? There is a myth in sales that says that you make a sale at the end of a sales process. That's how you close. And that's why we get so nervous when it comes to objections or when it comes to whether somebody's going to do it or not, right? And it's like at the end of a call. I remember in the beginning of my sales career, when I first started taking these sales calls, and I would get to the end of this call and I would start sweating. I would start getting frustrated. I would start really thinking like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna close or not. And I don't know what objections they're gonna have. And, and then I would try to overcome the objections. Again, I've talked about like my flashcards. I would have different flashcards for whatever objection would come up. And the thing was, is that all my focus was on the end of a sales call, which in actuality, the reality of a situation is that a sale does not happen at the end of a call. A sale actually happens towards the beginning of a call. And I know that people talk about this, but I I really want to show you some real tools that you can use today to learn how to problem side. Let me elaborate on that a little bit. Your whole intention as somebody in sales is to be able to solve someone's problem, right? And you really can't solve somebody's problem until they actually buy your program product, right? And using it so that their problem can be fixed, right? So it really doesn't make sense for us to solve someone's problem, right? In a sales conversation that happens after the fact. So what are we trying to do in a sales conversation? We are trying to find the problem. And and the reality of the situation is, is that most people have no idea about how big the problems that they have actually are. So in psychology, you know, it talks about whenever there's something that's really, really bothering you, maybe sometimes your brain will develop a glycoma where it actually prohibits you from seeing or remembering that memory or, um, you know, uh, remembering this aspect of, you know, what is pulling you, what is what's hurting you, right? And if I'm saying that incorrectly, I apologize, guys. The whole purpose of this is that your brain is a survival mechanism. Your brain is built for survival. It's built to keep you safe right? And so let's say that something is really, really bothering you. Well, sometimes your brain will block out the memories of that. Have you ever happened, had that happen before? Like, let's say you've had like a painful childhood or something horrific happened in your past. Maybe you don't remember every single little detail. That's because your brain is trying to keep you safe, okay? So I relate that to a sales process as well, because sometimes, you know, you don't really remember all the issues that you're currently having, which is why a great salesperson understands the importance of asking incredibly great questions. If you tell somebody that something's wrong with them, sometimes in our human nature, we don't wanna listen to that, right? We don't wanna just openly accept something's wrong with me, no, 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 no. But if you started asking questions to someone, maybe they can start realizing that there's an issue. For example, Let's say that, you know, I don't really realize the problem until it's too late, which is what the case is with most people. Let's say that every single weekend, I love to go and get croissants. And when I go get croissants, I go get croissants and some banana bread and some Danish cheese muffins and, 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 right? And then my one little croissant became a whole entire day of binge eating. And, you know, I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's whatever. It's just a Sunday. And then the next Sunday I do it. The next day I, I do it. The next Sunday I do it. And then the next week I do it on Saturday and Sunday. And this is the true story. And, <laughs> um, you know, I, I love me my croissants. But pretty soon I try to put on my pants and they're not fitting. Right. And so I didn't realize that my ass was casually getting bigger and bigger until I put on my pants and they don't fit. Right. And so I didn't realize the problem until it's too late. 
you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with eating croissants and doing new, but I do have a problem with I have to buy new pants every week, right? So can we help people realize that they have problems before it's too late in sales? And this can be in any subject. I just randomly talked about food because like that's something that I deal with, right? So when it comes to you're talking to somebody, we get to let somebody feel safe enough in order for them to relax so that I can ask the questions in order for them to tell me what the real problem is. Normally, this is right towards the beginning of a call. The beginning of a call, you're normally wanting to connect with somebody, make them feel safe, right? Start to understand their situation, right? So you're asking situation questions. Like, let's say I'm selling sales training. I'm going to be asking somebody what type of sales they're in, how many deals do they close a month, how many deals they're losing out a month, how much is their product that they're selling, you know, how long they've been doing this for. And I'm asking just like surface level logical information-based questions. And this is done intentionally so that I fully understand what this person is doing so that I can be curious enough to start asking problem-finding questions, okay? So after I fully understand this person's situation, I'm going to tell them kind of what this call is going to be about and kind of frame them so they fully understand what we're walking into. Um, And I'll go over another training of that at a different point because I feel like that's really important as well. But once I go through that, we have already connected. I understand their situation, their frame. They understand what's going on through this call. I then am going to start asking problem finding questions. And this is the most important part of the entire call. This is actually where the sale is made. It's made right here. And you're going to have to have a few tools in order to be able to do this. Number one, great questions. We already said that. Number two, a, an incredible tonality. Okay. If I ask you a question one way and it's really fast and abrupt and might not land the same way. If I ask a question with pauses and with a concerned tone, it will land completely different. So here's a good example of this. And I feel like so many people are like, and this is what I learned. What's the biggest problem that you're experiencing in your business right now? Okay. Like that question, first of all, the way I said it, super fast, like going straight to the problem. Most people are not going to tell you the one problem that they have. Like their brain can't think like that. We have to go underneath the surface. And so it's just not a very good question. But let's say that I had somebody that's coming to me for sales training and I'm selling sales training and they're telling me that they've gone through all these different courses and programs and nothing's really working, right? Which is the same thing in mind. So they're like, hey, I'm going this training, this training, this training. Um, I'm, you know, closing this way, this way, this way. Um, I would maybe ask a question like, okay, Sally, well, like, do you like that you're not closing X amount of deals a month, right? Do you like that you're not making the money you want to be making? Do you like that you're getting on calls with people and they're not closing, right? I'm asking like a probing question. I'm asking a question to try to find a problem. And I'm doing it in a way that's not like rude or abrasive. I'm doing it in a really simple way, a subtle way. Do you like that this is happening? Right? I'm using pauses versus if I was just going to ask it without the tonality, without the pauses. Do you like that you're not making any sales? Do you like that this is not working out for you? Do you like that you're not closing? Like, it's so abrupt that whenever you come with that energy, they're going to match you with that energy or they're going to pull back, which we don't want. We want them to be neutral so they can open up. Now, here is the juice. Here is the liquid gold. Every single sentence that somebody says has an onion in it. Okay, this is what I mean by that. Every single word that someone says in a sentence, one is carrying more weight emotionally. And most people don't want to tell you what's underneath the surface, right? They'll tell you a little bit of the problem because most people have an ego. Most people want to look good, want to feel good, want to avoid pain, want to avoid fear, which is totally okay. You're not going to tell a random stranger all your deepest, darkest secrets and the problems you have going on in your life. You're not going to do that. So what we tend to do is we try to make everything feel like better or sound better. Oh, you know, like, I, I feel like, you know, I, I just been really frustrated with how this is going on right now, right? In that word, the word, in that sentence, the word frustrated is going to be your onion word, okay? Because it's the one that has the most emotional weight. And every onion word is basically like 
a onion with so many layers that's wrapped up in pretty tissue paper, tied with a pretty bow on it, and sprayed with perfume, okay? It doesn't look like onion, doesn't smell like an onion. I promise you, it is an onion. And if you don't know how to uncover what's underneath that onion, you will not close this person unless they're a done deal. You have to have the ability and the skill level to understand and really listen actively to what somebody's saying so that you can hear the onions, so that you can dig and have the tools to know how to dig in order to obtain the root. When you obtain the root, nine times out of 10, you've closed the deal. When you obtain the root, if you don't know how to obtain the root or the person's really closed off, there's other tools that you could use for that. But I'm telling you that this is where it is. So let me give you a few examples on this. Let's say I say, hey, Sally, like, do you, do you like that you really haven't been closing right now? No, Kayla, I don't like it. You know, I've been really frustrated and overwhelmed lately because I feel like I'm not getting the results that I want. Frustrated? What do you, when you say frustrated, like, what's coming up for you, Sally? Notice my tonality. Notice my, you know, con- my tone, my pauses. What do you say? When you say frustrated, what's, what's coming up for you, Sally? Like, what's coming up for you when you say that? Well, I just, I feel like I've done everything right. I've taken this course, this course, this course. And for some reason, when I get on these calls, I get to the end and I freeze. Okay. Sally, like, I'm still trying to understand. When you say you're freezing, like, what's coming up for you emotionally? Like, is it, do you know what to do? Or is it something internal? Like, what do you think it is? Oh, Kayla, I think it's a combination of both. I think that, you know, part of me like doesn't know what they're going to say next, you know, and I don't know how to respond to it. And then the other part of me internally is like, I just don't want them to tell no to me again. And that sentence, which is the onion word, again, was the onion word, right? Like, I just don't want them to say no to me again. I'm like, ooh, again has some weight to it. So now I'm going to be curious there. I'm like, okay, when you say again, can you tell me the backstory on that? Like, has this been happening recently to you? Oh, yeah, Kayla. You know, I've been on 10 sales calls this week and every single one of them has said no to me. Right? Okay. And I'm asking her how long, right? And now I need to figure out how it makes her feel and who else this is affecting. So, okay. So the whole week, 10 calls, all no. How long has this been happening, Sally? This has been happening for a couple months now. I've been barely getting by. Okay. And is there anybody else that's affected by this? Like, do you have a family or like, who do you provide for? Oh yeah, it's me and my two kids. Oh, wow. How is that affecting them? Well, they're seeing me stressed. They're seeing me this, they're seeing me that. Well, what do you mean by stressed, right? Going into the onion word. Well, they see me, you know, so busy, like working that I don't have time for them. Well, how does that make them feel? And sorry, I'm just trying to understand. If you feel like you're asking too many questions, you can pause and you can say, I'm just trying to understand. How is that making them feel? Well, I feel like they're, you know, mad at their mom. Oh, wow. And yeah, I can completely understand where you're coming from. I, d- I totally get it. I'm about myself. Sally, you know, um, can I ask you how this is making you feel? I'm miserable. How miserable? I just, I can't take another day of this, right? And now we're in this like slow tone, we're paused, like we're deeper. Like, did you notice that there was so much there? Like we went down layer after layer after layer after layer. I wanted to know all the way down to the fact of like, how is this affecting her family? How is this affecting her personally? Like there's so much there. And the thing is, that's just one onion. There's normally about three or four that we need to go down and it's like seven or eight questions to get down. The thing is, the difference between a normal sales rep and something that masters sales is that you don't just ask question to question to question. You ask a question and you are in a state of curiosity, a state of caring about the person in front of you, a state of trying to just understand what's coming up for this person. That's what you're trying to master. That's what you're trying to figure out. Also with your tonality, if I just ask these questions and I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, you're frustrated. Okay, like, you know, who else is this affecting? Oh, okay. Like if I do that, I completely dehumanize the sales process. The whole intention here is for me to really honor Sally. 
make her feel like this is a safe place for her to share with me. She just said that like her kids are mad at her. Like this is something that's sensitive. And I really get to make sure that I'm holding space. The intention here is to create a gap in someone's mind. So whenever a person is talking, we want to make sure that the pain makes the pain go deeper and that the solution awareness, when we start talking about vision and, and their goals and what they want, it starts expanding their horizon of possibilities, which makes this gap get even larger. Because most people come to you neutral. They're not aware, right? Again, you know, like some people, like they have a block in front of them. They don't really see the issue because they don't want to see it. Some people are dealing with problems for freaking 10 years. The other day I was watching that that um, show where people cut pimples. I'm sorry if this is gross for you. But there was a lady on there that had this blackhead on her face since like 1973 or something like that. And she was saying like her grandkids and her kids always have known her with this blackhead and they cut it out of her face. And I'm just like, how has something been there the whole time and it's not bothering her? That's disgusting, right? I'm like, I, I, I can't. Like if I had a huge blackhead on my face, like, oh my God, like I'd be removing that thing. And the thing is, is that you get desensitized to your problems. This happens. You get desensitized to your problems and it doesn't bother you as much as anymore. It's just there, right? What would it look like if somebody had a flashlight or a mirror held up to areas that were not working in their life? You know, you have this ability. Being in sales is magic. You having the ability to let people really see the problems that they actually have and you being able to go underneath the surface and highlight that where they are finding the problems, not you. You're not telling them, oh, you have this issue. You know, you're frustrated because your kids are probably upset with you, huh? No, no, no. You were asking them questions for them to have the epiphany, the aha themselves. I promise you, if you can learn how to problem find, it would absolutely change your sales career, your tonality and, and the way you ask it is everything. You know, I hope that this episode um, has been helpful for you, insightful for you. You know, again, leave your comments below. I really want to hear your thoughts. I want to know if you're able to use any of this stuff. I honor you. Thank you for showing up for yourself today. Please share this with any friends that you have. And again, subscribe. I will see you on the next episode. I love you. And I hope that you have an incredible day. Ciao.